Welcome, my name is Errol Burrell. I'm from Akuma, America. I'm a machine center product specialist, and today we're gonna to be talking about barrel cutter technology. And to help me with this, we're gonna be uh, talking to a lot of our uh, partners. And we're gonna start with Brian Stoll, who's a senior application engineer for Gossiger. Next, we'll be talking to Brad Rooks from Open Mind, who's the application engineer. And Tom Rohn from ISCAR, who's a CTO, who's the chief technology officer. I'm going to be starting with Brian Stoll from Gossiger because there's going to be three facets to this demo. It's going to be the machine tool, programming, and also the tooling. So I'd like Brian just to talk about why we chose this particular machine tool and just talk about the actual characteristics of this machine tool, what makes it perfect for this demo. Uh, thank you, Errol. We chose the MU6300 because it was part of our multi-access center of excellence in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, the machine is a double column bridge style machine, high rigidity, high precision. It also covers a wide range of applications through the manufacturing industry, such as aerospace, automotive, die mold, um, structural parts, etc. The machine and control together just produces excellent um, products. We couple it with the five axis kit provided by Akuma on the OSP control, which includes options such as five axis auto tuning, which is provided with a Renshaw probe and stylus. So you can tweak in the center uh, rotation pivot values. You can accommodate or you can compensate for structural errors in the machine that cannot be adjusted out uh, physically. It also has tool axis or tool center point control tool posture fluctuation, uh, hypersurface, which is a motion control to help uh, control the ac and deck of the machine based on the cutting you're doing, whether it's high speed or high accuracy, the user has the options and control to change that as needed. Okay, so the next uh, facet of this actual demo would be the actual tooling. So I'm gonna hand this over to Tom. Can you just talk about the tooling that we use, Tom? and uh, some of the other options that we have regarding that same tooling? Sure, thanks, Errol. With the, with the barrel milling lines, uh, this is a recently introduced product for ISCAR uh, within the last year. And uh, not that the technology hasn't been around for, I guess, somewhere around five years now uh, with uh, solid carbide products. But uh, ISCAR, um, with its multi-master line, the interchangeable solid carbide heads that can be you know, taken from a shank and, and refreshed, um, that we saw, we saw this as an opportunity to introduce the, um, the multi-master lines with the barrel tools, whether it be a typical taper barrel, which, uh, looks a lot of times it looks just like a taper mill. You, you know, the radius on the side, like in the picture here is, is so large that, you know, a lot of times you wouldn't even know it's there if you weren't looking closely. No, I agree. A lot of times it looks just like a conical. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a lens type where the, uh, the radius is on the, the tip of the tool, which is, uh, you know, for working, uh, you know, on more shallow geometries and um, almost planar type surfaces, if you will. And uh, so, you know, we do offer the solid carbide lines as well uh, with the, uh, the taper barrel and the lens type and what we call an oval barrel. But the idea is the same. It's you're taking a, a large diameter segment and you're basically putting it into a smaller surface area uh, to create a large radius, which you can then use as in the picture to take larger steps and to create uh, finer finishes with larger step overs. And you know the idea is to apply these tools in the three act or three dimensional type parts or five axis machining centers, uh, where a lot of times finishing in the past, if you were using a ball type tool would take a long time to create uh, the surface finish that you would want. And uh, so now with, uh, with modern cam technologies, being able to recognize these hybrid type tools, if you will, and uh, um, with the machines, the, the five axis machining becoming more and more prevalent, we see more companies, more, um, more customers going into these, uh, these higher end machines to be able to get the parts, you know, one and done kind of on one machine and move on. Um, maybe sometimes in one setup, maybe two, but the idea is a lot less, right? Correct. So, uh, you know, we're seeing these tools, uh, you know, grow and adapt. And, you know, we've we even had some ideas when we were uh, outside this room here of, of how we can expand. You know, the, 
This is the idea with these hybrid tools and CAM systems that can recognize them and effectively program them. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. We can come up with a lot of hybrid geometries that is going to help customers um, reduce cycle times and, and achieve better surface finishes in, uh, in that lower cycle time. And, uh, but, you know, it all has to come together. It's, uh, you know, all the manufacturing technologies involved. you got to have the machine. You have to have the programming and the cutting tools to come along with it. And with that, you know, I'll turn it over to you to talk about, you know, how can we program these tools? Well, like as always, yeah. the, the last person to know in the leap of technology is the, uh, is the CAM guys. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that by, in a bad way. <laughs> but I mean, that they, we develop better machines. They develop better cutters. You've got to figure out a way how to program it. Yeah. See, you've got this one backwards. <laughs> no, no. I this, was, this was 100% developed by Open Mind. What, the barrel cutters? Yeah. Oh, wow. The whole theory and idea behind it. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I uh, stand corrected. Yeah. So ex explain more. Um, so with this part, what we wanted to do was show the multitude of ways you can use this tooling. Because you've got two basic use zones. You've got the tip radius that you can use as you would a standard ball mill. And you've also got the large barrel radius on the side that you can use in order to profile with a large step down. So with this part... After roughing, we use solid carbide tricoidal style roughing for it. Um, the part is P20 tool steel. So after all the roughing was done, we did all the semi-finishing and the finishing finishing with the barrel cutters using the tip for inside corners and outside radii. So you just using the one cutter to do all those? Uh, multi so multi we wanted to make sure we used a wide array that Iskar had to offer. So we did use the multi-master and you'll see that in the, in the machining footage. We use the multi-master in a lot of spots and we use some of the solid carbide offerings as well. Okay, okay. But we showed it from all three standpoints. We, we locked C and A at zero to do three axis cutting because this technology is not just available in a five axis, in a five axis capacity. Mm. You can also use it on three axis machine. Um, your, the geometries you can apply it to are a little more constrained. But if it works, it still works, and you can save a ton of time by using a larger step over. So we did some strict three-axis machining from a vertical standpoint, and we also did a lot of three plus two and full simultaneous. Now, of course, if you're using all the contact points of a cutter like that, I mean, are there some kind of uh, talk about the collision monitoring on, on, the, on the machine that may come into, a, a, into it? it should be a big factor in something like this. Yeah, the collision avoidance system on the Akuma machines is very helpful. Um, and that was pretty uh, prevalent in this project because we had one day to shoot this. So we literally, Brad would program the, the uh, tool path, the operation for whichever feature we needed. He would literally give it to me. I would put it in the machine without dry running or anything because I knew collision avoidance was on. We had everything defined properly. I would run it with the assurance that it wasn't going to crash. The machine would have stopped itself prior to crashing based on a parameter of safety distance that I gave it. Right, and so like so, all the as you mentioned in your in your first uh, statement regarding about the, all the functionality on the machine, um, that's all part of the five axis kit on, Correct. on the uh, on any Akuma five axis machine. So that that's part of the kit. So yeah, so uh, it really come into its own then, mm -hmm. its, own, its own then. So going going back to back to Tom, I mean, was there a lot of com uh, communication with the programming side, or was it just a case of like here's a tool? Do you have to give them any information? or Actually, we just needed to provide them with uh, the details about the cutting tool. The, yeah. the programming, you know, is solid, and, you know, they've, they've developed their, their tool paths to be able to, to take the, the parameters of the tool, plug them in, and then go about your programming. And uh, so it was really kind of hands-off from, from that point. So, of course, if you're using a, a typical ball mill, now we're not phasing out ball mills. I mean, you're always still going to need ball mills. But um, you step over maybe, what, five thou to get that glass finish, maybe in a dye plastic mold or something like that. So 
Um, what kind of finish were you getting from this? Kind uh, of we were stepping over two millimeter. Right. For finish. And what kind of RA were you getting? We were at a 30, measuring 30 on the profilometer. Oh, wow. The flat areas. If we back calculated the step over for a traditional ball mill, we would find that we were 14 times less the step over. And everybody knows that finish, the finish cycle time on a die mold is what kills the production. Mm -hmm. And if we can eliminate that and reduce it 14 times, that's just money, money saved in the end. So in the die mold, so what kind of industries are you utilizing? So straight out, straight out of the gate, you've already mentioned die mold. What about aerospace and things? Aerospace, aerospace structural, aerospace for, sure. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, okay. So let's go to a question to Tom regarding about the design of the cutters. So uh, I'm particularly going to focus on the, the geometry of the actual uh, uh, flutes themselves and and the uh, coatings. Is there anything special that you did on that? Other than it being the barrel shape, nothing special as far as substrate and uh, substrate and coatings. Uh, it's what you've. It's what a person would have been using for a, a long time as far as, you know, titanium aluminum nitride or aluminum titanium nitride coatings uh, with, you know, substrates and, and coatings change and, and improve. But these tools being recently introduced will, will consist of that. So, mm. yeah. You know, you mentioned the edge prep and speaking of high temp alloys, uh, an industry we never mentioned was medical. I can, mm. I can totally see these tools being used for trauma plates or for moral wraps to reduce the finish cycle time as well. Yeah, actually, we, we've done some of our first demos on uh, knee replacement mm. parts. So it, and it turned out really well as far as uh, how the demo looked and as far as being able to reduce the finishing cycle times. So when you said you're doing on the medical parts, when I see a needle, uh, a knee part, I'm seeing like using the tip of the cutter. So are you, are you utilizing the actual side of the cutter to actually finish? I think that there's actual cam ability that helps yeah. you use the different areas of the tool and it just depends on where you're at on the on the part and and what the geometry is. Wow. Yeah. So what during this demo we found out we expected that the big barrel radius would have no problem with fluting. It doesn't matter if we're at contact point near the shank or we're contacting near the tip and you can control that within the software where you want to contact on the bar big barrel radius. But the one thing that we did find that was really nice on all of these, all of them were four fluted, and we had plenty of flute at the tip to use it as a traditional ball without bogging it out. Mm. What, what can happen is at the tip of some of these, you cannot have enough flute. So if you try to use it to, you know, rough out inside corners, it can Pencil tend metal. to get, yeah, mm. it can yeah. tend to get a little You lose gummy. the gullet. Yeah. Mm. And you just, so you don't get the chip evacuation. Exactly. Well, that wraps up another great event. Uh, thank you for listening. This is a culmination again of our uh, uh, Partners in Think, which is T-H-I-N-C, Think. And uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration of a lot of partners, experts from out the industry, tooling, software, work holding, uh, you name it, right across the board, right across the gamut. And, and you guys are a part of that group and uh, totally appreciative of what you've done. And hopefully the customers out there have learned a lot and we're going to make you more productive and more profitable. So thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>